absolutely fantastic. The spirit of Godzilla lives on within the ultimate fighting machine, Sola Chigokin GX-103 MFS-3 Kiru. The Sola Chigokin line has released an awesome piece of Kaiju Gokin with a fantastic sculpt, LED features, die cast, and great articulation, we might have one of the coolest Kiru figures to date. Before we jump in, make sure to shop HLJ. Looking for an absolutely fantastic place to pre-order and import your figures? Hobby Link Japan is the place to go. Hobby Link Japan carries the latest and greatest figures, SH Monster Arts, X+, SH Figure Arts, Chigokin, and so much more. Offering a variety of shipping options, a life-saving private warehouse feature, and fantastic seasonal sales, Hobby Link Japan is the way to go. Click the link in the description of this video and start shopping at Hobby Link Japan today. Kiru stands roughly 9.5 inches tall and 10 inches head to tail. I'm not sure what scale you put Kiru in, but he is obviously bigger than our SH Monster Arts figures. Kiru looks great next to our mid-sized Chigokin figures from various lines. The scale looks great, now let's see how well Kiru can move. Starting from the top, we can look up, down, left, right. Now notice the neck joint here is a little tight, so be careful not to overextend and possibly pop anything off. The mouth can open up nice and fairly wide. The shoulders have a great range of movement. They can rotate a full 360 degrees with very nice solid ratcheting joints. The arms can come up a little bit over 45 degrees. We have pretty much double jointed elbows. We have a swivel in the elbows. The claws are on ball joints, so we can tilt and spin these freely. In the upper torso, we can lean forward, backward, twist side to side, and lean side to side some. In the chest, we can open up each of these panels, revealing the absolute zero cannon. Just above the waist, these pipes are free-floating pieces. The legs kick forward this much, Backward this much, come to the side about this much. You want to be mindful of the coil coming from the hip down to the thigh. You don't want to overextend the leg and possibly pop that out. We have a thigh swivel. We have a very nice ratcheting bend in the knees here. On the thighs, we can use our special included tool to pop open the hatch, revealing the thigh thrusters. The thrusters can rotate and extend a bit, which is very cool. The ankle guard can hinge as well as the feet. There's not much swivel here, it's kind of tight, but they are movable. Finally, we have our nice, long, multi-segmented tail comprised of several solid, stiff, and sturdy ball joints. As you can see, this tail is very solid, very poseable, and very cool. Kiru has a nice, solid, hefty feel to him thanks to his internal and external die-cast parts. Weighing in at a little over one pound of Gokin awesomeness. When it comes to sculpt and paint apps, Kiru is absolutely fantastic. Starting from the top, the head has a detailed metallic silver armored sculpt with various fins, panel lines, accents, and rivets. The eyes have a large translucent yellow sculpt with a subtle compound pattern underneath. Inside of the mouth, we have clean, semi-sharp bone teeth with a pair of Mazer cannons. The chest has a nice armored sculpt with various vents, piping, and accents. On the left pec, we have MFS-3. If we crack open the chest, we can see the Absolute Zero Cannon with a detailed lens and translucent parts. The shoulders and arms have a detailed armored sculpt with various vents. The claws have a sharp, multi-paneled armored sculpt. The legs have a nice, bulky, detailed sculpt with various panel lines and mechanical accents. Inside of the thighs, we have our gunmetal thrusters. The feet have a large sculpt with detailed ankle guards and sharp, almost turbine-like toes. Spin around to the back, we have our mechanical dorsal fins and back thrusters. The dorsal fins have a nice robotic sculpt with some having vents on them. Finally, we have our long, semi-sharp, multi-panel tail. We can really see the inner cable workings of the tail in between each plate. As we reach the end of the tail, we have a small barb. Kiru has a fantastic, bright LED feature that makes this piece a real showstopper. To activate the eyes, we need to remove the top of the head and flip the switch. To activate the Absolute Zero Cannon, we need to remove the cannon, flip the switch on the back, 
and press the left vent button on the lower chest. This LED feature really is fantastic. It's bright and very strong. It's really cool how the Absolute Zero Cannon glows from yellow to blue. I really love this feature and I really love this figure. For accessories, first we have our detailed cobalt blue backpack unit with various panel lines, gunmetal, and metallic silver accents. The backpack unit easily attaches to the back. Next we have our detailed railgun units. When attaching these, make sure to keep up with the elbow pins. They can be easily lost just like on our SH Monster Arts version. The railguns also have ports to plug in our semi-sharp maser blades. The railguns can extend a bit, which is cool. Next, we have our nicely detailed mechanical stand with two pillars to store the backpack and weapons on. We also have a stand that can support the backpack unit. There is another part of the stand that I'm missing. The middle of the stand is supposed to have a support base, but for the life of me, I can't find mine. I don't know if I misplaced it or it wasn't packed with my figure. Either way, Kiru doesn't seem to really need the center support stand anyway, so I'm good. Next, we have our two alternate sets of eyes, one for berserk mode with red eyes and one for manual mode with a vertical compound pattern. These easily attach to the head and look absolutely fantastic when lit up. Finally, we have our set of battle damaged parts that easily connect to Kiru. We can see the nicely detailed broken cables in the damaged arm. The Absolute Zero Cannon looks great with the panels torn off and the inner armor peeling back, revealing the internals of the cannon. We also have a nice tiny figure of Akane that plugs in above the shoulder. Now, let's do some city building. As a whole, Kiru turned out to be absolutely fantastic. The sculpt is well done, the paint-ups are clean, we have a good amount of die cast, great accessories, a fantastic LED feature, and Kiru is poseable. This really is a fantastic piece and I'm surprised how nice this figure turned out to be. I absolutely recommend picking this figure up. Now, how much does Kiru cost? I imported my Sola Chugokin GX103 MFS3 Kiru for $200, which is absolutely worth it. To see more Chugokin reviews or learn about the buildings I use in my reviews, click the links on screen right now. Be sure to follow me on social media, definitely follow me on Twitch, and I'll see you guys in the next review.